Welcome to Electron Online and here's a new topic for us in chemistry. We're now going to talk about the chemistry of gases. So we have a whole bunch of, of uh, videos lined up for you. And here's our first one. The first one talks about the three states of matter. Of course, the third one, gas, is the one where this section is mostly going to be dealing with. But we want to understand what a gas is and why we have gases, why we have liquids, why we have solids at various temperatures. So again, the basic three states of matter is solid liquid and gas and then if you take a gas and you superheat it it turns into a plasma which means that all the electrons have been stripped away from the nuclei and you just have free electrons and free nuclei floating around in a mixture that is very very hot like in the center of the sun or so but the states that we typically deal with are solid liquid and gas now you may ask yourself the question why do we have solids why do we have liquids why do we have gases at the same temperature why is one a solid another one is liquid another one is gas well, that has to do with the molecular movement of the, the atoms and the molecules in a solid liquid or a gas. At all temperatures, atoms tend to vibrate. The hotter they get, the faster they vibrate, and also the larger their vibrational oscillations are, and the colder things get, the slower they vibrate, and the smaller the amplitudes of the vibrations are. So when you have a material such, for example, uh, sodium chloride, which has a lattice structure in such a way, sodium chloride is made up of sodium ions and chlorine ions. Sodium ions are positively charged, chlorine ions are negatively charged. They, the sodium ion gives an electron away to the chlorine ion, they now become charged, they then attract each other electrically, and they settle into a lattice structure, a three-dimensional lattice structure, and they're bonded together very, very strongly. So when you heat up sodium chloride, the atoms will vibrate, just like another other substance, more and more as you heat it, but they're so strongly tied together due to, due to these electrical charges that they don't rip apart, they stay in their lattice structure. So it's much more difficult to melt or to boil uh, sodium chloride. And so that is also part of the reason why it has such a, str such a large number for the energy required to pull the ions apart. It takes 774 kilojoules per mole to separate the ions in one mole of sodium chloride. Now if you go to water for example, water has a different molecular structure. It's made up of one oxygen and two hydrogens per molecule and it's situated in such a way that the oxygen end of the molecule becomes negatively charged and the hydrogen end of the molecule becomes positively charged. So these are called polar molecules. And polar molecules do not settle, per se, into a, a structure like sodium chloride, but they are somewhat electrically attracted to each other because they are polar molecules, and the negative end of the molecule tends to be attracted to the positive end of another molecule, and so they kind of hang together. And if it gets cold enough, if the vibration slows down enough, then those molecules will actually settle into a kind of a crystalline structure, kind of haphazardly put together like this, not as nice and neat like sodium chloride, but enough to hold it together and so ice then forms. It also turns out when water freezes, the, the molecules settle out into, into a, a specified structure that is larger in volume than the water molecules themselves when they're in, in a water state or a liquid state. So the reason why water will will uh, melt at a lower temperature than sodium chloride is because the molecular bonds, electrical bonds, are not nearly as strong in something like this than they are in this. So when you raise the temperature of ice and you raise enough where the molecules begin to vibrate so violently, they will actually break these electrical bonds, the structure, and so the molecules begin to roll over each other, turning a solid into a liquid. So now we have liquid water, it's basic molecules that are attracted to each other, but they are agitated by their kinetic energy so much that the electrical bonds don't stay together and so it's kind of like a bunch of marbles rolling over each other in a constant movement. If you then continue to heat things even more, eventually these molecules will actually begin to break free from each other because they will have so much kinetic energy that they'll begin to float freely in the atmosphere and so then it becomes water vapor. Now, another gas that we're familiar with, which is oxygen, of course, we need oxygen to breathe, to have the combustion reaction take place in our, in our body so we can actually live and, and, and use up energy, the food that we eat. But if you take a look at an oxygen molecule, we take two oxygens and they're bonded together through what we call a covalent or sharing type of bonding, which is different from a sodium chloride bond, which is an ionic bond, where you actually sh 
not just sharing but giving electrons away so that the two parts that come together are oppositely charged and so they're attracted very very strongly now in these covalent bonds they're also attracted but the molecule structure is such that there's really no particular uh, difference in one end of the molecules to the other they, they do have a dipole moment as we call them, we'll talk more about that at some other video, but it does cause this perfect symmetry of this molecule, so one molecule does not attract itself to another molecule very, very strongly. If you put oxygen molecules together, you have to lower the temperature quite a bit before it turns into liquid and even more before it turns into a solid. Oxygen will actually begin to melt from a solid state at 54 degrees Kelvin, which is really, really cold, and begins to boil and turn into a, a gas at 90 degrees Kelvin, which again is extremely cold. So the attraction between one oxygen molecule to another is very, very weak, and therefore, with just a little bit of thermal heat, the molecules begin to move enough to simply break free and begin to turn into a gas at fairly low temperature. So it really has to do with the structure of the molecules, how the electrical charges are divided between them, how the electrical charges are divided between the ions, and how the structure molecule uh, causes one part of the molecule to be negatively charged, the other part of the molecule to be positively charged, or in how the molecules are arranged in such a way that there's very little difference between the, the molecule in where the positive and negative charges are, and therefore the attraction between them is very, very weak. So the only thing that really causes the oxygen molecules to attract is the fact that they are dipoles, and so there's some differential in where the electrical charges are within the molecule, enough to cause them to freeze together or to turn into a liquid if the temperatures goes low enough. So that's the basic definition of the three different states and why we have the three different states at different temperatures and what causes them to go from one to another. One more point perhaps is what we call the latent heat of fusion and the latent heat of vaporization. So every substance requires a certain amount of energy to go from the solid state to the liquid state and from the liquid state to the gas state. And in, and in order to cause it to go from one to another, it requires an infusion of energy. We call that the latent heat of either fusion or vaporization. Fusion to melt and vaporization to vaporize. For water, to take one mole of ice and turn into water takes six kilojoules. To turn one mole of water into one mole of gas takes 40 kilojoules. It's a lot of heat, but then compare those numbers to this number right here. One mole of sodium chloride takes 774 kilojoules, way more than this, in order to separate the ions. So you can see why this remains a solid, much higher temperatures as opposed to water or compared to water. So that gives you kind of an idea how that works.